Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 1.7, Linear and Absolute Value Inequalities. In the previous video, we introduced interval notation by starting with inequalities, transforming them into number lines, and then writing an interval that described the shaded portion of the number line. In this video, we're going to discuss the intersections and unions of intervals. Now, some of you may already be familiar with what intersection and union mean. In the event that you don't, here are some definitions. The intersection of two sets, in this case two intervals, is the set containing elements common to the first set and the second set. In other words, it's what two sets have in common. The symbol for intersection looks like an upside down U. It also looks like a lowercase n, as in intersection. The union of two sets is the set containing all elements belonging to one set or the other. In other words, we join them together to make a larger set. The symbol for union looks like a capital U, which is easy to remember because union starts with U. So I'd like to show you three examples of intersections of two, of two intervals and three examples of unions of two intervals. You'll notice I've already got number lines set up because they will help us find our unions and intersections. And you may also notice that the two problems side by side to each other are the same intervals, except that the one on the left has an intersection and the one on the right has a union. So let's start with the intersections. For the first one, we want to find the intersection of negative three of the interval of negative three comma two with two brackets, and the interval one comma five with two parentheses. The question is, what do these two intervals have in common? In other words, what numbers on the number line belong to both the first interval and the second interval? One way to find that out is to draw each interval on a number line and see where they intersect or where they overlap. Now, you can use multiple colors to do this, and I'm going to use multiple colors, but one way to keep them sorted out if you're using just one writing utensil is to sketch one of the intervals just a little above the number line and the other one a little below. For example, negative three to two, negative three to two, I'm going to shade in on the top in red. Because they both have brackets in the interval, they will both have brackets on the number line. And then the other interval from one to five, I'm going to shade in below. And I'll do it in blue. So the interval from one to five would be from here to here, and both would have parentheses. The intersection is where these two intervals overlap. Imagine, if you will, that I put them both on the number line, one of them being red, the other one being blue. The intersection would be both red and blue. So it's like saying, where would the number line be purple if I put these intervals on top of each other? You can also see that they both overlap right here, starting at one and ending at two. So that's where they intersect. So what's our answer? Well, where, does, where do they begin overlapping? At one. Where do they end overlapping? At two. But we have to make the same decisions about brackets and parentheses. Now the, the naive argument is, well, the one had a parentheses, so I'll use that, and the two had a bracket. And, and that's sometimes correct, but the best way to decide whether one or two gets a bracket or parentheses is to ask yourself, do one or two belong to the intersection? In other words, does one belong to both of these intervals? Is one part of the red interval? Mm -hmm. It goes right through it. Is one part of the blue interval? No. It starts at one, but it does not include one. In order to be in the intersection, you must belong to both intervals, and one does not. But what about the two? Does it belong to both intervals? In the red one, it stops at two, but the bracket says it includes the two. And on the blue one, two is included because it goes right through it. So in this case, preserving the parentheses on the one and the bracket on the two was the correct thing to do. 
I think most of the time that will work. I'm sure I could come up with an exception if I try it. Let's try the next one. I invite you to pause the video and try it. But I'm going to go ahead and do it the same way I did the other one. I'm going to sketch the first interval above the number line in red. So let me find the number three. The first interval starts at three and goes to infinity. So it starts at three and goes to infinity. And it includes the three. So bracket on the three. The second interval begins at negative one, one space to the left of zero. But does not include negative one, so it begins with the parentheses and then goes towards infinity. If I put these two shaded portions of the number line on top of each other, where would they intersect? Where would they overlap? Or if I drew, if I drew them in red and blue, where would it be purple? Because that's what red and blue make. The answer is, the overlap begins at the number three, and it continues on towards infinity. So all we have to do to describe our intersection is to say where it begins, which is at three, and goes, and where it ends, which is infinity. Well, it doesn't end at infinity. Infinities always get parentheses, but what about the three? If you're going to put a bracket on the three, you're saying three belongs to both shaded portions. It does on the first one because of the bracket. It does to the second one because it goes right through it and includes it. So bracket three comma infinity is the intersection. What about the last one? The first interval starts at negative infinity and goes to negative four, which is right here. So it starts over here, stops at negative four with the parentheses, meaning it doesn't include it. The second interval begins at four with the parentheses and goes to infinity, so it goes to the right. Where do these intersect? Where do these overlap? Answer, they don't. So there's no intersection. Now there's a symbol for a set that has nothing in it. Because after all, an intersection is a set of values, and the set is empty. The symbol for the empty set is a circle with a slash through it. So if you're ever doing a question in an online homework platform, and there are no numbers in your set, you'll probably have the option of entering this symbol. All right, so it is possible for an intersection to be empty if two intervals do not overlap. Now let's talk about union. Union is the set containing all elements belonging to one or the other. Intersection is the set of elements belonging to the first and the second. Union is the set of elements belonging to the first or the second, or possibly both. But I think you kind of already know that the word union means to join things together. So in these next three, we're going to join together the intervals into one big interval. So for example, the first interval was from negative three to two, so it started back here at negative three. And it went to 2, both ends with parentheses, excuse me, both ends with brackets. Then the other interval began at negative, excuse me, began at 1, ended at 5, and it had parentheses on both ends. So imagine drawing these on top of each other and joining them together. In fact, we don't have to imagine it. We can flat out draw it. 3 to 2, we'll shade that in, and 1 to 5. If we join them together, like two raindrops falling down a window, they touch each other and boom, bigger raindrop. If we join them together, now we just have to ask where the union begins and ends. It begins at negative 3, goes all the way to 5. Now, if you're wondering about the, the one or the two, well, the two clearly is in the union because it belongs to both intervals, but what about the one? The one belongs to the first set but not the second, remember? But that's okay because to belong to a union, you only have to belong to one or the other. It doesn't have to be both. And since the number one belongs to the first interval, it does get to be in the union. So yeah, it just, they just hooked up and the one got included.
So it starts at negative 3, which is included, but the 5 is still not included because the 5 didn't belong to either one. So the union, union is bracket negative 3 comma 5, parentheses. Again, union is you just join them together. What about the second union? Well, we already have the number lines over there, so let's just copy them over here. And this time, instead of writing them in different colors above and below, we'll write them in one color on the number line. The first integral started at 3 with a bracket and went to the right forever. And the second interval started at negative 1 with the parentheses and went to the right forever. So together, what's shaded in? Where does it start? It starts being shaded in at negative 1, which is not included. Negative 1 belongs to ne neither original interval. And it goes all the way to infinity. There's no need to pause at the 3 because you've hooked them together and 3 is no longer the end of anything. It's in the middle of the union. Now this last one's a little sneaky. Because if we were to draw the two intervals, negative infinity to negative 4 would start at the left end stop at negative 4 with the parentheses. And then 4 to infinity would start at 4 with the parentheses and go forever to the right. The union is the collection of these two shaded portions. But unlike the previous 5, I can't write this using one interval. Why? Because all of the others have one beginning and one end. This intersection started at 1 and ended at 2. This intersection started at 3 and ended at infinity. This intersection didn't start or end, it was empty. This union started at negative 3 and ended at 5. This union started at negative 1 and ended at infinity. But this union starts, ends, starts again, and ends again. So how do you write one interval when your number line has two disconnected shaded portions and the answer is, you can't. So how do we write this in interval notation? Well, if you're writing interval notation for a number line and there are disconnected pieces shaded in, you write one interval for each piece and put a union sign between them. So the interval notation for this is parentheses negative infinity comma negative four, close parentheses, that's the first portion, union, parentheses 4, comma, infinity, that's the second portion. In other words, it was kind of a trick question. Sometimes when you union two intervals together, they do not connect like the first two did, and therefore you cannot represent their union with a single interval, but rather as the union of multiple intervals.